Welcome. This is the September 25th Open ZFS production user call. We have Stu, Andrew, Matthias, and myself, Michael, and Greg. I can't do this. I'm a mess. M E M A T I A S. Welcome. This is the September 25th Open ZFS production user call. We have Stu, Andrew, Matthias, Greg, and myself, Michael. And others may join us later. But uh, Matthias has a question about doing a Z pool rewind to checkpoint at boot on the root on ZFS system as to simply with an external data pool. And so Andrew, it sounds like you might have a question about what his motivations are in the first place. Yeah, well, I mean, my, my, my question is, I guess, what if it's not, you know, if it's something that, that is reasonable to discuss, what's going on that, that's necessitating that. I mean, I've never used that option at all. And I have a number of machines. So hearing that that's needing to use is kind of surprising to me. It's a bit of a corner case. So um, my, my uh, daily driver I've been using for the last uh, a few months uh, with 14.1. I made the mistake of not uh, giving it enough swap. Uh, when uh, running on a machine that is uh, aptly uh, resourced, that, that's not a problem. But uh, when I'm, I've been running on a ThinkPad with a, a small amount of memory and I've been running out of the two gigabytes default swap that was uh, um, allocated at uh, install time. So I moved uh, to another computer uh, by simply moving my uh, NVMe, no, no problem. But then I wanted to uh, move to a bigger uh, uh, NVMe because I could not uh, at least safely uh, try to, to you know, uh, shrink one partition. I mean, it didn't make much sense to try to shrink the main partition, grow the other. So I moved everything to the new MVME. And uh, since, I mean, normally I would have DD'd uh, from one to the other and used a grow FS uh, uh, um, functionality. But in this case, I actually re reinstalled for fresh. I also took advantage uh, of doing that to, to follow uh, um, I mean, based on uh, last week's uh, meetings, I decided to give a try to, to running my, uh, my daily driver on uh, um, PKG base. So I did a fresh install, moved to PKG base, and then um, moved my home partition from the old to the to the new, uh, and I just wanted to have um, a uh, uh, a common point of uh, uh, as an insurance, right? A common point of uh, of uh, between the two installations, the two NVMEs, and be able to rewind there uh, if uh, if possible. And since I had a fresh install, I also wanted to try the 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 checkpoint uh, in real uh, in in real life uh, rather than uh, than uh, um, when I have to so at the moment when I could test it but not in a moment of crisis like uh, you know burning down my my computer at a conference or something like that uh, but in the end yeah I uh, I didn't have enough time so I'm left with the question of how would I do that in a, in a real situation? And I did think of the, and I, I actually, I, I went all the way to, to booting with uh, MFS BSD and importing, uh, but I, I got cold feet um, <clears throat> about the, so that was an, a, a, another part of my question. Uh, when uh, it told me that the the hard drive had been, uh, I mean, sorry, the pool uh, was last in use by another uh, another system, 
and uh, basically I, I would have had to force the import and I just wanted to, I mean, I would imagine that it would have gone well, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have enough time to, 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 yeah, to bear the fallout if it did not. So this left me with a couple of questions that uh, I, 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 yeah, I'm looking forward to having some answers so that when the time comes, I can, I can do this with a, a little less uh, um, misgivings. So now the, go ahead, Andrew. I was say, at least on our side, I, I don't have a lot on the BSD side of, of, of ZFS, so feel free to take me with whatever dose of salt you'd like. <laughs> um, the forcing imports, I have done that. I um, And that will come up whenever you have, uh, whenever you boot off of another media, you're going to get that because the other media is going to have different it's not going to have the identifiers. And so you're going to see this disc that looks like it's imported on a machine that's got a different identifier, even though that's the same physical machine. So yeah, uh, for, for the, for the record, I do it all the time. I move yeah. drives from one chassis to another, the pool, you know, re-import the pool. You have to force it regardless. It happens yeah. all the time. And I have knock on wood, never had an issue other than a failed drive in, in that transport step. Yeah, I've, I've, I have done it as well, although it has been a while. I don't do it a lot. Most of the cases that I have, I'm able to properly export. If you do a proper export, you don't get that message. Oh, good point. And it's a safety check for situations you're probably not having, possibly even the like host checking for HA and other things. So. I like to do it all the time. So it's a it's a force, but it's nothing to be worried about, despite the use of that word. Now, based on everything you've said, I suspect you, in every case here, you want want check uh, snapshots rather than a full pool checkpoint. A checkpoint is a very almost comprehensive, I'll say, complete pool a snapshot for lack of a better term it is a checkpoint and you can roll back absolutely everything including uh, z pool upgrades all data all everything and it's a pretty blunt instrument intended for say uh software updates where you have everything in a nice safe sta state you want to try a new version and new pool version and a bunch of new stuff with the option to fall back I don't think you want that. I think you want snapshots. And I had one for some reason I forgot about. And I found that I had like 300 gig space wasted on my laptop consumed by it. And so I found it more useful to simply destroy it than to ever consider rolling back to it. So I hope that helps. Now, to your actual question about can you rewind on boot, which is in, an interesting one. There is a, an article that I've pasted here. And I am curious about that, but I've found that in all these years, I've not really needed to rely firmly on a a checkpoint rewind. I suppose if it was a very exotic move from like uh, ZFS and packages rather than in base and updating pool in the same process and just somehow wanting a guarantee that I can get back to exactly where I was in every regard, great, but I don't think it's a tool you want anyway the only the only situation i could think of that i was able to think of for it was a situation where you've got discs not acting properly and a loss of power situations so mm -hmm. it's not getting flush so, so the disc claimed it was flushed it wasn't flushed and you lost power would it help you because we're talking kind of caches and things in flight um you you would have a consistent state if that's what you're getting. Yeah, you would have yes, a consistent state. You'd have a really, state. really consistent state, exactly. but it's going to be out of date so quickly that yeah, I don't would think be. it's helpful. I mean, I'm I'm not sure it, it would be, but that's, I mean, that's what I was thinking of. So thinking terrible thoughts out loud, do you think there'd be any value to a incremental checkpoint like one does with a snapshot series? Or is that just crazy talk? Is that directed at me? Anybody. Uh, as much, equally to the cat, just because it's a wide open idea. <laughs> uh, 
Um, anyway, like I said, I've too. never had to use this functionality. I mean, Illumo supports it, but I've not had to use okay. it ever. So cool. I, 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 I question whether I can talk intelligently. Do or Greg, have you used it or Phil? Sorry, I was uh, responding to something else, so I wasn't paying really close attention. No, no worries at all. Just curious if you if you've had a use case for checkpoint Z pool checkpoint. Um, I've usually just used the uh, uh, snapshots oh, yeah, and absolutely. and pulled out snapshots if I need to recover data that I accidentally fat fingered. I haven't yep. gone back to checkpoints as far as I recall, but that sounds like it would be a really handy thing if you make a major. Major, uh, major, error. major. Yes, correct. Major update, major anything. But the point is, if you do not delete that checkpoint, it starts saving absolutely everything on the pool as if like snapshotted and collecting and you might regret it like I did on my laptop. I'm like, where did all my space go? Well, I've been writing to it and it's been just it's, disciplined it's an easy carefully thing. keeping all that. Go ahead. Well, it's, the one... Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I just want to say it's, it's a very easy fix to that problem because it's super easy to release that checkpoint and uh, uh, then you get, it's much clearer uh, or easier to, to understand uh, than, you know, snapshots when you have so many snapshots and how do you get back your space? Sometimes you have to do a little bit of uh, ferreting out of the, which is the snapshot that is actually holding that and that uh, uh, bit of space. Since there's only one checkpoint, that's actually one of the reasons why uh, it's interesting. It's it's a uh, it's a very binary, uh, you know, it's on, it's off, and you 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 can both in terms of understanding and getting back to to uh, to some place. It's super um, super easy. And just to your to your point about snapshots, I, I've done all that on top of having all my snapshots and uh, uh, doing my uh, my ZFS send and receive. Of my uh, partition, I mean my home, uh, my home uh, file systems and all that. It was just a way to to test that, uh, and I tend to have a lot of uh, file systems. And sometimes a long, long time ago, uh, getting um, the right uh, on boot uh, mounted, unmounted uh, uh, mix of things, a long maybe seven, ten years ago. Or ten years or more ago, it, it sometimes it was difficult. I have I've never had problems uh, in the last few years about about it, but sometimes it was a problem. Uh, when you did a Z, Z, um, Z pool import export, sometimes it was uh, uh, if you didn't take enough care of the having the cache file, the right cache file, and etc. I never had a problem anymore, but uh, I I'm still have that in the back of my mind. It was a way to 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 try this, and I I, I would like to ask two follow up questions, but when there's uh, there's time. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Phil, did you have any questions? Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking of Alan Jude's talk uh, last week at EuroBSDCon mm -hmm. uh, about uh, making an appliance and a um, a use for checkpoint might be in an appliance where if it fails you you know the update fails you can roll back to a known good spot and he's been using uh boot environments for that mm -hmm. uh but that might I'm be about to say be yeah. ease yeah, and that so... was apparently delphix's original motivation it was literally for their appliance so yes agreed <laughs> so yeah, that's what i was thinking that instead of boot environments uh, checkpoint is an alternative <laughs> um i couldn't tell you the the technical benefit of one versus the other uh because it would work a little differently. Because you might. Can you, can, can you do a send of a checkpoint? I. You might do a raw send of just the absolute top level device, but there is no point in time reference. It's just yeah. that moment. It's a like blunt so. instrument. That's why. That's why snapshots are always my solution, so I can send it somewhere sure. else and use it. So I. I've, I've never used it. As, I've never used checkpoint in that manner, but I have used snapshots in that. Yeah. And it you should be defaulting the snapshots. Uh, it's a checkpoint's a pretty exotic tool, but there are situations where I guess it's a lifesaver. Anyway. Okay. That was just so, it. So uh Phil, you may have caught 
during his talk the, uh, I believe it was boot to snapshot, which I think you can set at least on a FreeBSD system at the loader. I am waiting on an answer if you can do uh, boot FS to that snapshot and what it means for read, read onlyness or what. So it was an interesting concept he mentioned in the talk and I will investigate more. So, and likes checkpoint, it might be a very limited use case, but it sounded kind of cool. Anyway, Stu, uh, you wanted to talk about sparing across JBODs. And I noticed you mentioned, what does ZFS do about which spare to use? I think ZFS does absolutely nothing. It's all up to like Z and whatever management daemon is on your OS of choice. But I, I could be wrong about that. Right. I was I was using ZFS as open. What is open ZFS logic? Mm -hmm. That was the intent. So whatever is in the mix, I don't care what's doing it. It's one. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here building four JBODs, each of 102 drives. I'm going through the oh crap. What happens if yep. I have a drive in JBOD four go down and the spare picks up in JBOD one. What's that do to my performance and logic and all that kind of jazz? So it's a purely academic question, but it has a real world <laughs> impact for me, you know, right now. So yeah, about that. That's what we do. It. Yeah, about that. I'll go philosophical for about 10 seconds, which is this is re, 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 re reminder why I really prefer humans make any kind of HA decision as opposed to a system that is a really blunt instrument. So say you've got, and I've seen it, age, uh, drives of different ages on the same system. And it's like, well, we know these are being replaced. The drive, the, the system, I'll rephrase it. The system will never know that a certain set of drives are about to get replaced physically or are riskier than others or whatever. It couldn't care less. So I, I the whole notion of having it make these critical decisions for you at a random time when you don't have all the facts at the at hand uh is uh not helpful and welcome john doe i'll go with should i go with anonymous or john doe anyway so but to that point to that point inside of d-raid in that configuration you have no control over that spare ah so that's the other piece of this too is i'm you know I've had, I finally got the opportunity to play with D-RAID right alongside on the exact same hardware, yeah. unit, versions, everything. Oh, so nice. Air quote, traditional, you know, VDEV layouts. Um, so that's what I'm playing with right now. But it goes back to, I know that I can go and allocate a spare in a traditional VDEV and tie it physically that way. Whereas in D-RAID, it's more of a shoot and pray type of thing. Well, I thought with D-RAID, it's a pre-allocated virtual spare as opposed to a standby spare. If, it shows I... that it's, yeah, it shows up as a, you know, as a spare on the, in the settings, but yeah. I haven't broken anything to, to actually test it yet. Um, uh, is this a system you have time to work with in the next week or two? And you could uh, enlighten us all at a certain upcoming event? That's That was my goal. That is a um, noble goal you got right there. Because <laughs> I've actually got one set up that, yeah, I've got one JBOD is D-RAID. Uh -huh. The other is, ex is exactly the same, in my mind, set up with normal VDEVs. And uh, test the performance and mainly to test the stats because that so I brought up probably a month ago that um, it looks like the IO stat against D raid reports less than the IO stat against traditional VDEV type of scenarios. That's what I'm that's what I was really going after the data for. Yeah. And the sparing just came in while I was, you know, sitting here taking 45 minutes to put in 204 drives. And nice. My fingers wow. just hurt. <laughs> I know, right? Trailless, please. Trailless.
Oh, they are trailers, but you still oh, have to do this. That's... Switch. Goodness. Okay. Yeah. Um. Did we so those in are... any way help your question, or are you m mentally just uh, mapping this out no, for yourself it... with this system? Yeah, I'm just trying trying to figure out. Okay, eventually, you know, these are spinning drives; they're going to break. What happens when stuff happens in three years? Um, because it's all brand new. So if it passes the first week, it'll be three, three and a half years before anything starts really breaking. Right. Interesting. And when you said, so I, IOSTAT was lower on IOPS throughput or both? All stats coming off of a D-RAID IOSTAT were lower than what the, a, the exact same test happening on a traditional VDEVs layout. Um, and as far as I can tell, is I've got the D-RAID set up in a, as similar fashion as possible. But those are there's some dark magic there that I haven't I haven't figured out yet. I look forward to any and all science that comes out of that. Okay, it looks like John Doe came and went. They have that right. Uh, Greg, any hot topics, questions, follow-ups? You're muted. Still muted. There we are. Um, no, not today. I'm uh, just a little bit knees deep in some MTU issues we're having on our network, so... Always fun to troubleshoot. Oh no. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. We introduced a uh, switch from a different vendor than the ones that we use because we bought a solution and it came as part of the package. And uh, I want to take it out and replace it. But, anyways, that's the battle I'm dealing with right now. Godspeed, young man. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, uh, Phil, did anything else jump out at you from your obvious econ? I've just returned. I'm still kind of sick as a dog. <laughs> um, yeah. Not, uh, not related to uh, ZFS in particular, but there is a lot of good content there. I am thinking what jumped out also related to ZFS beyond Alan's boot to snapshot, and I'm struggling. I did get a closing slide in about the upcoming event, so hopefully that gets some activity, some interest, some reservations, some registrations, I'm trying to say. And as I say this, I see a whole bunch of questions in the chat follow up. Okay. Uh, let's see. I will copy and paste them over. And by the way, you all have the right to write to the document. It's your document. So... Follow-up questions, Greg, about exporting. Ah, how do you export a root on ZFS system? I'm guessing that's technically a shutdown, a clean shutdown, but that's actually a good point. Uh, oh, Stu, did you comment on the clean shutdown not needing Dash Force, or was that Andrew? Um... Yeah, on a clean, uh, well, uh, on an export specifically. So if, if for some reason you're able to export it, you won't have to do the dash force because it won't have been mounted last on a different file system. Hmm. So, mm, but, but you, you, that's, how do you do that with a uh, the uh, system? That would be the, yeah, you're going to have, you're going to have to, to load it up on a, uh, some other type of boot media and do an export that way that should put you into a situation where it should come back in just fine and if you somehow don't have the luxury of a clean export this the force again is quite safe and you mentioned renaming on yeah. import i do it all the time and in the course of having some trouble with a really really crappy usb to m.2 adapter I wonder if you could use the import rename on a suspended pool. You can't, from unless they've added some new features, I don't think you can export oh, never... or force export a suspended pool, but I'm curious if 
You can physically deconnect it and try to re-import it with a different name. Hypothetically. Don't know. Never tried that. Um, um, but I've definitely imported with alternate names. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, and that's totally normal, safe, nothing exotic or weird. Just, just do it. So, yeah. Other topics, questions, jokes, insights, t-shirt ideas? Can, if no one has another one, I, I do have Please. one that... Yes, absolutely. It's your call. Um, is there um, uh, uh, some sort of emerging, uh, I mean, or what's the current... Um, conventional wisdom about the best uh, snapshot uh, sending for backups uh, to, I've used Sanoid, uh, ZXFer, uh, um, Z, uh, this and that. I mean, there's quite a few and I'm, uh, I would be interested to know if it's just a very fragmented uh, uh, pan landscape where Everybody is doing their own uh, their own thing, and probably a, a fair share of manual stuff and all that. Or is there a an emerging standard that I should uh, try and uh, I have and an use? extremely biased answer, which I put in chat, which would be Velta from Daniel, an attendee of the of these calls. Uh, Zelta is a tool he developed for his company. It's based in Auk. And that is unique in that you do not need Zelta at the other end. You need a Unix POSIX systems at the, system at the other end, which is a rather reasonable request. As Plus, a, go ahead. I was going to say, um, ZREPL tends to work fairly well. That does have the disadvantage that you need one at the other end. Um, the upshot of it, though, is it is very, very configurable. So you can, you can do a lot of things like choosing what your authentication method is, mm -hmm. And, and a lot of this kind of stuff. So that's what we use for most of ours. And I'll just add yeah, a bit about Zelta one quick thing is that Daniel made a point that it does not use the dash F force flag like we've kind of touched on with force before. And by not doing that, it, it, uh, it, protects your backups and does its very best to guarantee that you're never like destroying data to backup data. Cause that's sort of an ad admission of defeat to have to force the backup. Just saying. So uh, quick, quick question on that. Uh, as part of the, all the, the tests I've been doing uh, uh, last week, I've been doing quite a lot of uh, dash F on, uh, on ZFS receive. So, mm -hmm. which I understand is what you're referring to. Yes, that would be. And it, it was it was not forcing because actually I wanted to force a rollback uh, again for for testing uh, testing purposes. So I could very well go on without it. But I was surprised that it was uh, actually complaining. Hey, I can't. Uh, I I can't do it because uh, there's snapshots uh, in the way that you would that you need to to. Uh, to delete. I actually, I have a. I've done that with a. I've tried that with a very simple script, uh, uh, creating um, completely uh, 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 for for that purpose uh, uh, empty uh, or almost empty uh, file systems, and mm -hmm. uh, I think it can be reproduced. So, is that something that should be expected? Is there something I'm not understanding in how it should? Uh, in my expectation of how it should uh, act. I believe it should create destination uh, file systems. And it's one of those things where just, I think we're all guilty of messing with it till you figure it out and then you do it intuitively and forget the exact syntax. But uh, I'm, I am curious to hear what the true proper, correct balance of, you know, proper clean send, I'd say never needing a force, but if you have good send history, you generally don't need a force. So I'll let others chime in. Well, I know for the situations where I needed to do more bizarre things, I actually have a script that I wrote to handle it. And I have not had to touch it in long enough. 
that uh, I honestly don't remember. It kind of just does right-ish things. Exactly. Um, mm -mm. I say right-ish because one of the parameters it takes is a regular expression, so how right that is, I, I, I leave it at your decision. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll test again, uh, because definitely in the past, dash capital F uh, uh, got rid of the, of the snapshots that were in the way. Uh, and I have a repeated testing situation where it does not. So if, if you're uh, telling me that this is not the expected uh, uh, behavior, I will look a little bit hmm. more into it, just in case there's something there that... Uh, uh, you might what have to do go ahead i was gonna say you like i said it's it's been a while since i had to to actually deal with it and, and i put what i figured out into the script but it might be something like you have to do the dash f along with something like an r or a capital r hmm. to make it recursive because mm -hmm. it sounds like what maybe you're hitting is that you've got snapshots in a sub file system. I'm guessing. Is that, is that what uh, I'm it's, hearing? Um, I, I usually take a recursive. Uh, so, and, and in this case, uh, also recursive snapshots on the, on the top. So there, there is uh, snapshots on underlying systems, but there's, it's also, it also exists on the top, uh, on the top system, but maybe that's the, that's the thing I, I didn't uh, take into account, right? That it's uh, it's um, the the snapshots on the underlying uh, file systems that are uh, 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 blocking things. I'll, I'll test that. And what yeah, documentation and you are you going off of, just for context here? Uh, the so my. First and foremost, to start with, so uh, Michael, uh, Michael, uh, and uh, Jude's uh, uh, um, uh, book on, uh, on ZFS. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, the handbook and uh, the idea. I, I sorry to say the name of Oracle uh, Oracle ZFS manuals. Oh yeah. Uh, they keep coming up. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, and uh, quite a quite a few. Actually, and also uh, looking at the output of uh, and, uh, the Sanoid companion that uh, handles. Uh, so actually, I, I I use that to 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 start. But um, I'll uh, I have a I have a script. I'll share that, and cool. maybe someone can uh, can make more uh, more sense of it than uh, than I did. Okay. Well, gang, anything else at this time? And I have one tiny point from EuroBSDCon, which is I did talk to Olivier, who's working on FreeBSD Union FS, and I'll be working to get him and Rob on the same page, Rob Norris, about what would a <coughs> excuse me, what would a native OpenZFS Union FS look like? So anyway, that's an exciting topic. I'm losing my voice. Um, anything else, or should we call it good? Quick question. Oh. Yes, go ahead. And lately, uh, I've had good surprises with uh, extremely full uh, Z pools, oh. where uh, uh, in the past uh, you you started to have problems at around ten percent uh, uh, um, space left, uh, and. I made by by mistake. I made uh, uh, automated snapshots of an uh, extremely large file, which filled up my disk in very little time. And uh, I've since observed that it was not just a fluke, but I could uh, work without any noticeable uh, uh, difficulty with uh, a pool that was that had maybe. Uh, um, 15 gigabytes left out of a, a terabyte of a nominal uh, and it was just working perfectly whereas mm. 
before a long long before that you, you would start noticing so is it something that is there some sort of improvement that is well known that has uh, taken place uh, or is it just uh, some weird uh, NVMe related or whatever related uh, situation so it does change right allocator after 80% and things will slow down as it's trying to find contiguous spaces. Moving to NVMe might completely hide that penalty compared to spinning disk. I imagine it hides it at least somewhat. Yeah, so it's it's only when you truly hit 100% that you might get a situation where you can't like write to delete, if that makes sense, because ZFS is like that. So... So yeah. Exactly, that. and that's that's and that's the the situation. That's how I realized because the the that I had the problem. I actually hit the zero bytes left. Interesting. You know, yeah. And yeah, in don't the do past, that. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't do that. So usually, I I I don't. <laughs> I have a reservation, etc. But in this case, I I did not. Uh, but it was not a problem. That's I came back. A long, long time ago, maybe 15 years ago, this was a hell of a situation oh, to yeah. get out of. Yep, In yep. this case, I just deleted uh, a few snapshots, <laughs> and it worked. And it never stopped being a responsive uh, system and everything. It would, I was very surprised. It's definitely I, been gradually improved. Go ahead, Andrew. I mean, I, I, I know that you know, we still very closely monitor to try to deal with things before we hit 80. Of course. And when it does, because when it does hit 80, we do still see a performance problem, but not the same kind of, you know, you may not be able to delete things at all that you run into when you hit, when you, when you hit that zero. So, yeah. Mm -mm. And I've just academically, I've I've heard you know people consider reservations, but the reservation might behave exactly like a full pool, so you still might have the penalty of like not maybe you could reset it dynamically and then use that space briefly to start deleting. It's it's not it doesn't it doesn't have that problem in the two dot two two dot or anything above two one five yeah. I think because uh, we do it. We put a twenty percent reservation that can't be exceeded, and don't put anything in there. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not taking capacity away. It just so that you never really hit the eighty percent threshold according to the Z. Ah, good to know. Could that be what has been saving me? Yeah, because I mean, if it, if you if you create a and we call it a protection um, space that here's here's your twenty percent and nothing gets written into it. Nobody can write into it. Mm. Basically zeroed out permissions. Um so there's no way to even hack it. So never hit that threshold. Because the eighty percent is at the pool level, not the individual space level. Uh what's the syntax on that? It's like a reservation on the top level B dev or what? I mean, I just, the... created, I just created another space that's got a twenty percent. I calculated on the fly. Okay. And it's named protection dash pool name, so we can mm -hmm. if there are multiple pools, there are multiple protections. Um, and it just because that's always zeroed out, as far as that's concerned, um, you never hit that that governor. Yeah. I guess is the best definition of it. And so what's the, is that just set reservation equals whatever ref reservation or something? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. Strategies to not shoot yourself in the foot. Well, anything else at this time? Go ahead. That, that's why this is the user's call. Yes, indeed. <laughs> how, how, to, how to work around the issues. Amen. Well, perhaps we call it good and meet in a week. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Super. Like and Be subscribe. Sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye.